Well, new tonight, last year, as the country locked down and people lost their jobs, public records revealed that some social media influencers gained work from the state of South Carolina. Nate Morabito tells us more. The state of South Carolina even hired a former employee to post on social media. And in many cases, it's unclear exactly what the public received in return. Due to the social distancing, I've decided to partner with Discover South Carolina. From a pimento cheese recipe. One and a half cups of Duke's mayonnaise. To restaurant suggestions. To picturesque views of state parks. The South Carolina Department of Parks, Recreation and Tourism reports it spent a combined $56,000 paying and reimbursing two dozen influencers hired to market the Palmetto State throughout the pandemic. People with handles like Shades of Pink, Spa Travel Gal and Low Country Blonde. We really feel like we're getting um, a good return on that investment. Corporate Communications Director Sam Queen says the state spent nearly the equivalent of what it cost to buy a full page regional ad in Southern Living on a handful of influencer campaigns. The role of an influencer is to kind of become a trusted voice for their followers. Targeted social media and blogs aimed at suggesting drivable outdoor destinations, safe dining options and inspiration for future travel. It adds a human element and that's something that audiences really connect with. While there's no evidence anyone visited South Carolina as a direct result, Queen says those campaigns paid off, touting the program's overall average engagement rate of more than 7%, well above the industry standard. The influencer program has proven to be a really effective tool for us to help us reach millions of potential visitors who we otherwise would have a pretty hard time reaching. But the agency would not provide specifics, no individual metrics, not a single frame of content, calling them trade secrets, leaving us to find whatever we could on our own. You're just asking the public to trust you, aren't you? Well, I, I do think that our overall engagement rate should give public confidence that this is working. Queen said releasing details would give competitors South Carolina's playbook. When you hear that, what do you think? It doesn't sit right with me the first time I hear it. Christopher Bryan is a South Carolina attorney and public records expert. He believes the public has a legal right to see what the state funded and exactly how each post performed. Over in North Carolina, Your Table is Ready is an effort by local restaurants and Charlotte's got a lot to safely welcome back patrons. The Charlotte Regional Visitors Authority provided us with specifics of its $18,000 worth of influencer spending. We just got to Optimus Hall. The majority paid to Ugandan American influencer Jessica Nabongo in October. A campaign the CRVA said supported diversity and inclusion and showcased safe ways to travel to Charlotte, one that led to a reported 8.4% engagement rate. It's just an effective way to get a lot of bang for your marketing dollar. Back in South Carolina, go visit discoversouthcarolina.com slash recipes. Aside from the pimento cheese recipe campaign, the state is keeping all of its specific results close to the vest, including how this campaign performed. That was a very engaging and effective campaign for us. The agency paid its past public relations manager, Handel Eaton SC, to talk South Carolina food with another influencer in New York. This is a former employee of your agency getting money to be an influencer. Is that a conflict of interest? We don't believe so, and that, that definitely was a question that we asked. One of South Carolina's competitors, Visit North Carolina, told us the Tar Heel State did not pay any influencers to post on social media during the pandemic, instead relying on traditional advertising and marketing. But Visit NC did acknowledge the, quote, great value of influencer marketing. 